All right, guys, what's up? In this problem, I want to look at when we have batteries facing two different ways, which way will current actually flow? Because we've been taught when there's one battery that current will flow from high potential to low potential. So if we look here and we have a high potential to low potential, we know that it should come out of the high and then come back into the low. But we have a situation where this is going this way as well. So now we're caught where which one of these, if any, is going to override this or does maybe the current overlap and flip out? So when we look at A, it says at which direction will the current flow? Now, it's a very simple explanation. The current is going to flow this way. This is going to be the current flow of this circuit. And the reason why is simply because V2 is greater than V1. So that electromotive force is going to overpower this battery and the current is going to flow like so. So it's very, very simple. So this is kind of one of those like an F net kind of a situation. This one is stronger than this one. So it's going to overpower it and the current is going to travel in this direction right here. And you're going to see that whenever there's batteries in two different positions, we're going to look and see, especially in series, which one of them is stronger that's going to override the direction of the current. In part B, they ask, what is the overall EMF, electromotive force, is saying, what's the overall voltage of this circuit going to be? And we know since V2 is going to win, so we're going to have V2, and that's going to gain potential difference, and then it's going to lose it when it goes across here. That's going to be our overall potential difference of the circuit, or EMF. So we have 12 volts here, minus 4 volts. So that means the overall EMF of this entire system is going to be 8 volts. So that would essentially be equal to V total. Now I want to know what's the current in the circuit. So they essentially want to know what is I total. And that doesn't really matter if it's a circuit or whatnot because we know in series that I1 is equal to I2. And this is a series circuit because current only has one loop. So if I want to find I, I am most likely going to use Ohm's law, which is V equals I R. So what I can do is I can look at the total circuit and I can say that I is going to be equal to V total divided by REQ, the total resistance of this circuit. And in series, REQ is just equal to R1 plus R2. This is a rule. So we have three ohms plus one ohm is going to be a total of four ohms. So when I solve for I now, I have 8 volts divided by 4 ohms. The current of this circuit is going to be 2 amperes, 2 amps. Now, the last question wants to know the rate at which energy is consumed. The rate at which energy consumed, guys, is just power. And power is equal to V times I. I did a video explaining this formula. If you need to, I will link it up in the card and you could check it out. But essentially, we're going to have to find the power either dissipated or provided at each one of these individual elements. So at V2, V2 is going to provide energy at P equals V2I. So that's going to be equal to 12 volts times 2 amps. Sorry, let me put the units. So that's going to be 24 watts, all right? Now that is provided, so that's given to the circuit. While at V1, it's going to absorb energy at a rate of P equals V1I. So that's going to be 2 amps times 4 volts, which is going to be a total of 8 watts. So this is going to be energy that's provided and energy that is absorbed. All right, now these resistors are going to dissipate energy at a certain rate. So we are going to have at the different two resistors, power is going to be equal to I squared R. That's a variation of this at one resistor. And P equals I squared R at the other resistor as well. So we have 2 amps squared times 3 ohms. And we're going to have 2 amps squared times 1 ohm. 4 times 3 is 12, and then 4 times 1 is 4. 
Okay, and we know that energy and is going to be conserved. So this gives, so we'd have 24 watts provided to the system, and that must equal everything that's taken away. Eight plus 12 plus four equals 24 watts. So that's how we know that we're right. All right, guys, this is an example of how to deal with batteries facing in two different directions, and then also some practice finding current and using the power formula.